particular, I'd like to talk about what are called intrusion prevention systems. And sometimes uh, you may also hear the notion of an intrusion uh, detection system. And, and these are uh, similar notions. I would say that the IDS or uh, is, is in many ways a predecessor to the current IPS. So intrusion prevention systems are also known as IPSs in the, in the industry. And uh, detection systems are called IDSs. Okay, so let me actually give you a bit of motivation in this video about kind of why people care about these notions. And so if you think about kind of traditional, traditional security at the network level, imagine you had uh, some attacker and uh, he, was, uh, he had a malicious payload. So imagine just here's a network packet, okay, and it's, uh, it's really malicious. And there's the packet header and this is the body of the packet. And this packet gets sent over a network and let's say he's trying to compromise a system that is at the end of some enterprise. Imagine here's, a, uh, uh, here, here's the internet and here's a system here that belongs to an enterprise and uh, you know, he wants to compromise this system or compromise maybe some system behind this enterprise. Now the way that network security has traditionally been, been handled is uh, with what's called a firewall. And a firewall basically imagine it, it's like a device that kind of stands in between a, uh, a network, let's say an enterprise network, and uh, the rest of the internet. And all traffic has to kind of go through the firewall. So let me explain kind of what the firewall does. Well, what the firewall does, or at least what a traditional firewall did, is it basically would look at this packet and it would extract out uh, the, the actual packet header and look for some very basic pieces of information. So it would look for the following pieces of information. It would look at uh, the source of the packet, and this is uh, typically the source IP or internet protocol address of the packet. It would look at the destination IP, so where is the packet going? And then it would look at the port number. Uh, what port is that particular packet going to? And then based on these three pieces of information, it would look up these three pieces of information uh, in a security policy. Imagine there's a security policy somewhere, and there would be a set of rules in the security policy. And these rules would say things like, if you see something at maybe at this port number or going to this port, then block that traffic entirely. Or uh, if you see maybe, uh, you know, this particular IP address or this particular range of IP addresses, uh, you know, go ahead and maybe allow that, uh, etc. And, and I think in, in general, I mean, the, the way that, that traditional firewalls worked is they basically took kind of a, a, uh, a block by default mode. So really the idea was that uh, you would only allow uh, certain packets through and if, and if the, uh, the packet did not meet the right criteria, you would go ahead and block it. And so maybe you'll say, that you only allow the following ports to be open in your firewall. Like maybe you would allow port 80, uh, which is, let's say, the, the port for web traffic over HTTP. So that's an example of, of a, a port you might open in your firewall and everything else would be blocked. Okay? Now, as it turns out, I mean, there may be situations in which, uh, as you can imagine, that, it, that uh, where you might have something that has a malicious payload, but the actual header information would be the source IP or the destination IP or, or the the actual port number may actually look pretty benign. There may be nothing that's materially suspicious about the actual uh, header information, but the actual content themselves could be malicious. And so, uh, in these cases, the problem with the firewall is that it's too granular. If, if it if a firewall encountered something, it would just look at these three very basic attributes, and it wouldn't be able to um, always make a, a blanket distinction about whether or not something was malicious within the context of those attributes. Uh, and and the, I think the classic example of that would be. Uh, in web applications. So nowadays, what we are seeing is we're seeing a lot of activity that is attacking uh, web applications. And web applications um, reside kind of in, in many ways in the stack one level above the actual network layer. And so the idea is, is that uh, because they're above the network layer, uh, the, the actual firewall itself has little purview into what's going on in the context of web applications. And so as such, uh, it's very possible for an attacker to create an attack that, that exploits a vulnerability in a web application and uh, or maybe a web browser and that would not be caught by the, the firewall because the firewall is not actually looking at the, the core contents of the packet. Okay, And this is really where IPSs come into play and also IDSs. So what you can imagine, imagine you've got, you've got now a second layer and then we kind of draw that in here. Imagine you've got a second layer right here, uh, another box. Okay, and this box might do more deep uh, actual content inspection. So maybe examining the actual payload. So examining, examining the actual payload 
Uh, and the payload refers to the actual contents of that network packet. And it might turn out that when you examine the actual contents, you will unearth attacks that you wouldn't have been able to identify if you just looked at uh, these high-level attributes. And that really is what a, what a IPS is designed to do. This is the, the main goal of an IPS is, is to actually examine the, uh, the contents of what's going on. And I think there, there's actually a pretty nice analogy that one of my colleagues came up with. And I, I think it's helpful to kind of review that analogy here. You can think of uh, a firewall as a security guard at a building who maybe is checking your credentials. And so maybe... Uh, there's somebody at the beginning of the building who's going to basically look at uh, whether or not you are allowed to go in that building. And you can imagine the IPS as kind of a mailroom clerk in that building. And so imagine that the security guard sees the mailman come in, and the mailman obviously, um, because he delivers mail on a legitimate basis most of the time, would be allowed through the building. But it's only when the actual packages are inspected by the mailroom clerk that you might infer or identify that a particular package has some something malicious or bad in it. Okay? Hopefully that was pretty useful and in future videos I will dive more into how uh, IPSs work and, and more about what they do.